All right, we're going to be going back in time a little bit for this one. It was my intention from the beginning to play the DDT episodes using the official U.S. PlayStation Magazine demo discs in the order in which they were released. Now, since they're all numbered, that was pretty easy. But I found a way, sure as day, to fuck that up. See, the thing is, I didn't... Although I did save probably all of the discs, I didn't put them all in one location. Now I have a couple of CD wallets that contained a number of the discs, and I used those to, uh, for all of the episodes that I've made so far. But I knew that there were a number of them that I didn't have in that CD wallet, and I didn't necessarily remember every issue of that magazine that I bought, or every demo disc that I had. But I did remember that I had issue number two. I missed issue number one. But I didn't know where it was. Where? Well, well, I found it. And here we go. This was the first demo disc from the official PlayStation magazine that I got. And it was one that I played in ass load. Because, of course, money was expensive. And this was in the earlier days when I just had first gotten the PlayStation. So... I didn't have many games, but I could get a demo disc. So, Armored Core, let's jump into this. Armored Core is a From Software game that, uh, better known for the people who created um, Dark Souls, Demon Souls, um, Bloodborne, stuff like that. At the time, though, uh, From Soft was better known for things like the Kingsfield series and Armored Core is another one of those series that they had made um, it's, uh, I didn't I never actually ended up buying this game although I did get Armored Core Project Phantasma which was a sort of half sequel to this and that game was great but um, you know that uh, story I told in the previous episode where there was somebody that um, wanted to loan me a copy of, um, what was it, uh, Legend of Dragoon? Well, the um, I loaned him the game and it, and it was stolen. <laughs> I loaned him Armored Core and it was stolen. So I never got Armored Core back. System engaged. So here we are. Now this doesn't seem like much. It's just a mech game. Not terrible graphics for its era of the PlayStation 1. But nothing like truly remarkable. You just sort of go on these missions. You destroy other robots. And you go on with your day. Now, what's really cool about this, though, is something that I'll get into after I complete this mission. Uh, there's something on the radar. <laughs> there we go. There's another one over here. It's just a freaking uh, crane, like a construction crane. Oh, it's shooting at me. <laughs> you can fly a little bit. I'm almost done. This is not difficult at all. For some reason, I remember this game being a lot harder. This demo being harder. Oh, it's inside. I know, I'm pretty sure you gotta pay for ammunition and pay for repairs to your mech. So let's get this over with. And I'm pretty sure that's it. Awesome. Okay, I completed that mission. Okay, yeah, see, ammunition and repair. 
So I did make money off of that, but I spent like near half of it repairing my mech and buying ammunition. But here's the big deal about this. You can build your own mech. You design the thing. So, look at this. Okay, so I only have the one head. Oh wait, no. I do have two heads. So you can check to see that it changes some of them way more or have better armor. That kind of stuff. See, look at this. I have different... Okay, I only have one core. Let's change arms. So, if I equip this one, I can't carry any weapons. But the arms are guns themselves. Okay, tank treads. You move a lot slower using the tank treads, but you can carry a lot more weight. So... Engines... Back weapon... Back armor. Back. What is this? <laughs> I don't know what that is. It might be the radar. Okay, so there. I named it. And I'm pretty sure I can change the colors and put emblems on it and stuff. Yo! Work of art. An OG... Um, MLG. <laughs> there you go. Option I don't have any optional parts. Now you can buy parts also with money that you got from winning your shit there. No parts to buy. There's a, another arm I don't have. Oh, look at that. Quad legs. Now there's one other mission. Now let's use the my customized mech for this uh, other mission here. Oh, there's no reward in monetary reward, but I think you get some legs. Now I played this demo a million times because I loved this. Um, I love this whole game. I mean, the gameplay style takes a little bit of getting used to because game you're system. engaging combat mode. Because you are the game is actually like fairly slow. Your movement is fairly slow. Ah. Uh. It's, it's difficult to turn around because the characters, your, your movement is so damn slow. Haha. <laughs> Once you get used to the controls, you can, you can do a pretty good job with it. But it does take some getting used to. Is that it? Target of operation cleared. System switched to normal mode. Good thing too, because I just completely ran out of ammunition. <laughs> See, it, that one just cost me, and now I'm actually in the red because of all of the ammunition that I fired off. But I got some new gear. You can repeat your old missions. So I went back and forth, like doing this over and over again, until I got all of the equipment. And then, once I had all of the equipment, then I didn't have anything to do with the game anymore, so I had to just keep playing it. <laughs> but anyway, moving on. Armored Core, though, great game. It's kind of a shame that... You know, I know they continued it. Armored Core 2 was one of the first PlayStation 2 games that they had shown screenshots off for, and I thought it looked great, but the actual game wasn't quite as impressive looking as the early screenshots would lead you to believe. 
I played, I think, maybe one of the Armored Core games for the PS2, and then I got one of the PS3 Armored Core games, but I don't think we've seen anything since the PS3 era. Considering it's the PS5 era now, it seems like uh, maybe FromSoft has moved on. Croc. Uh, we had played Croc 2 in one of the earlier DDT episodes. Visually, it's an impressive looking game for early PS1. Uh, PS1. Oh, just kill yourself there, Croc. <laughs> I mean, we're in the... F it's not... Oh, okay. We're not looking at... Oh, shit. The very early days of the PS1. This was 1997. The PS1 launched in... 95. But it was early as far as I'm concerned with the PlayStation 1, so... <laughs> I'm all that really matters to me. Kaboof! Splat. Croc 2 looked better than this one did. But of course, it was a sequel, so you're kind of expected to. I, I uh, This was probably my least favorite demo on this disc. I mean, it's... The N64 was really where most people went for platformer games. And this one, I guess, isn't a bad one. But if you compare it to, say, Mario 64, which, um... Man, they haven't figured their controls out yet. Compare it to something like Mario 64, which has the open... More open environments, larger environments. It looks good by comparison to this. I mean, it... Croc looks pretty good compared to Mario 64, but the environments are so much smaller. But anyway, moving on. Never owned Croc. Just played the demo a few times. Alright, let's get out of this. I do like how all of the... Um, I'm a big fan of how all the games are just displayed here. I don't have to sift through a menu. They're all just right here. Colony Wars. Colony Wars is another game that I was really into but didn't own. Pretty much a lot of the demos that I would play on this ended up being something that I really wanted and then wasn't able to get. I did eventually get Colony Wars Vengeance, which was Colony Wars 2. Oh, you know what? I did eventually get Colony Wars, but years later. Colony Wars Vengeance, though, Okay, I rented Colony Wars Vengeance. And it was um, a really depressing game, if I remember it correctly. But then I eventually did get Colony Wars, but this was pretty... I mean, this was years later. This was like the PlayStation... Uh, the late PlayStation 2 era. Where I, okay, I have the money. Let me, uh, let me get that game, finally. And then I had no interest in playing it at that point. But uh, early-ish PlayStation 1 game, the fact that it's a space flight sim is pretty cool because it allows them to can sort of consolidate the uh, processing of the PlayStation in order to uh, put more detail into the ships. So the game looks better than you'd think it would. Of course, uh, later games, I think there was three Colony Wars games on the PS1. And I don't think the series continued past that. Notice that I have two different weapons I can fire here. Purple and red. You use purple to deplete the shields. Once, once you've taken the shields down, you use red to blow them up. Compare this to um, the appearance, anyway, of the Wing Commander games, and this just looks better. Of course, it's a completely different kind of game. 
This is much more based on the flight sim, and Wing Commander is more of an interactive movie in a lot of ways. It says there's one more. I don't know where it is. Oh, is that it? That's a, it's like a comet or an asteroid or something. Oh, here we are. It actually controls pretty good. All critical. Alright. I'm having a hard time hitting this fucker. Alright, shield's down. Yep, I hit him. I don't know if their shields will go up eventually, but... And we win. Clear the dock. So I did eventually get this game. I just didn't play it much once I eventually got it. But I got it in like... Like 04 or 05 or something like that. So when I got a lot of... Uh, I ended up getting a lot of PlayStation 1 games around that era that I had completely missed. There was a GameStop that I would go to. It's also when I got... Um, the Legacy of Kane games and all that. I'm pretty sure this is a video. Oh, is it? Oh, okay, it is a video. <laughs> I saw press X. That's weird. They show you the main menu. The compression of this video is pretty bad. Never played this game. And I'm not a Ghost in the Shell fan either. I'm not I'm not really I mean I've tried watching anime, I just can't get into it. I did see the Ghost in the Shell movie. The one that was made I don't know, was that made in the eighties or nineties or early nineties, I guess? This girl's a character in it, and she's a robot. She was a person who was, I forget her name, but she was injured as a child, and she was injured so badly that they more or less had to take her brain out and put it in a robot body. So that's sort of like the ghost in the shell is a reference to the idea of uh, the shell, the shell is the robot and the ghost is the human consciousness that inhabits it. This looks more like a uh, kind of tank shooter. There was a tank that she destroyed at the end of that movie. I guess that's what we're looking at here. Should look to see if there's any uh, any character models or something I can get to integrate this into the intro. You know, I gotta stop talking about the intros I'm gonna do. Considering at this point, if you're watching it, you've already seen the intro. <laughs> what is she repeating that for? What? Suspend? What's going on? Okay, I, we get the title. Yeah, we get it. <laughs> I don't necessarily see the appeal of Ghost in the Shell. I guess there's like a whole series based on it now. Cool Borders 2. Oh. Okay. So this is a going to be an interesting one because it's sort of like a halfway between the early snowboarding style games like Extreme and Too Extreme and the later stuff like Cool Borders 3 was a game that I had played in an earlier episode and 2 let's I wonder about the first one never even played the first one or seen it okay 
okay? God damn it. Is that what he said? Oh, okay. Showtime! Showtime! Who will smoke the competition? Heh! <laughs> Ready? Is this a race? Somebody already went ahead of me. Alright, so it definitely looks better than what we had seen in, like, Too Extreme in an earlier episode of this. Uh, probably the first episode of this DDT series. But it's definitely not... Not, like, a, a tour de force in terms of graphical prowess on the PlayStation 1 that we'd see in, like, Cool Borders 3. Oh, shit, you're gonna die. Oh, wow, okay. You <laughs> just sort of tumble back onto your feet. It's, it's cool to see the sort of progression of understanding on how to make a game on this system. You could see it in other, like, long-running series that ran the entire length of the PlayStation 1's life cycle, like Resident Evil or Final Fantasy, and I guess Cool Borders is one of them. I thought that was a jump. <laughs> But you have this, and I wonder what Cool Borders 1 looked like. I guess that was a PlayStation game also. I should check that out. <laughs> uh, Ridge Racer was another one. The early Ridge Racers, and then the later Ridge Racers. And then, um... Oh, this looks dangerous. <laughs> Ridge Racer was another example of... Oh, wow, well, you should not have died there, but you did anyway. Huh. Oh, yep, yep, looks it. <laughs> Thanks for the advice, random announcer guy that I shouldn't be able to hear. I don't remember playing this much, which, considering how much time I spent with um, this demo disc, a little surprising. I guess I spent the entire time playing Armored Core and Crash Bandicoot. I mean, I do remember this Cool Borders too, but uh, I don't play a lot. All right, coming soon. NHL Face Off 98. Okay, it's a video. Maybe not, maybe it's not a video. Okay, it is a video. Uh, I mean, these PlayStation 1 videos weren't made to be seen on a large screen, and the emulator doesn't do the best job decoding these things. Not that high of resolution. There's a lot of noise and blocking and stuff. So it can be a little difficult to judge how good a game actually looks based on these videos, but this doesn't look terrible. Actually, it looks better than the... Of course, it's a couple of years later, I guess. Better than the hockey game I had played back in... I guess the... PlayStation Sampler Pack disc that I did some episodes ago. Oh, that ended rather abruptly. Okay. Crash Bandicoot 2. Now, I played Crash 1 on the first episode of the series, and I played Crash 3 later on, so it's good to see I'm playing these in order. Oh, okay. <laughs> Crash. Always one of the best-looking PlayStation 1 games. There's definitely a lot of effort Naughty Dog put into... Um, 
into the development of this because this maximizing what they can actually achieve on the PlayStation 1. I mean, this is 1997, but even the first Crash Bandicoot, which is, I guess the year before, 96, looked remarkably good. And there were, there were PlayStation 1 games that came out at the end of that generation. Now, I always talk about how uh, towards the end of the PlayStation 1, you had a lot of developers that really got a good handle on how to make good-looking games for that system. But... Naughty Dog seemed to have it right from the start. They released a game that a lot of other developers probably would have killed themselves to be able to pull off early on in that machine's life cycle. And then just got better. I mean, this... I don't have them side by side to compare, but... Quick Glance tells me that this game looks better than, it's, than the first Crash Bandicoot. And then, of course, Crash 3 looked even better than this. It's a shame that Crash couldn't, uh, that Naughty Dog didn't continue with Crash. I mean, Crash was overdone. There were too many Crash games, and it does make sense. Like, okay, Crash Bandicoot, they're gonna do, they're gonna do, uh, Ratchet and Clank. That's gonna be where it made more sense that Naughty Dog was going to stop wasting your time producing a series like Crash forever. So, it made good sense that they did um, Ratchet and Clank. But it would have been nice to see them do another Crash later on. It also would have been nice if they didn't hammer it into the ground as many Crash games as they ended up producing. There were too many. But, I mean, given that the... What was it? Crash It's About Time was a recent game? That's, uh... Hmm. There's a fan base for this. I like the kind of side scroller segments. The Crash Insane Trilogy was another one. Oh, what am I doing this for? I don't need these whatever fruits. I'm not actually playing the game here. Oh, okay. I thought that was the end. Oh, it is the end. <laughs> Great game. Mad 98. I'm no good at these football games, so don't expect much. Oh, Madden, you look better. <laughs> Emulators kind of got um, rendering errors, a lot of noise on this screen here. Oh, it is a loading screen. <laughs> Come on now. Hello and welcome to beautiful Green Bay, Wisconsin, where the New England Patriots prepare to take on the Green Bay Packers. Okay, so this is... New England. Call it in the I guess I'm playing as the Patriots. And awesome. New England has won the toss and elects to receive. Alright, so, yeah, like, um... Uh, I'm not controlling this, am I? Oh, fantastic. <laughs> now, all of my talk about the games looking better later on in the generation... Football games are a huge example of that. Huh. 
incomplete. Football games are a big example of that because you have uh, this game here, which, again, not the earliest example of a PlayStation 1 game, but definitely a mid-gen PlayStation 1 game. First half, you could say. And look at what we're looking at here. This game does not come across as something that really was impossible to have done on, say, the SNES. So you have things like, okay, I see the football as a 3D object. Of course, the playing field is a 3D object, and the arena, the crowd, and all that kind of stuff. Although the crowd is really just individual picture pixel textures. Oh, I'm not... I'm not the Patriots. But all of the players on the field are 2D sprites. Of course, that was done to, uh... Oh, running the wrong way, idiot. <laughs> Johnson with the, tackle. the, uh, all the characters are 2D sprites, and that's done because there's only so much geometry that the PlayStation 1 can draw. It's very limited in that regard. And it was easier to do these 2D sprites, which are probably actually just, um, four vertices and a plane. So, and then you draw a texture over top of it. Of course, later on in the generation, they were able to go and... Later on in the generation, they were able to go and create these uh, football games and soccer games and, and hockey games and baseball games where all the characters weren't 2D objects anymore. They were 3D. And it allowed for such a better depth of animation and all of that kind of stuff. So, 98. I bet you when you got to 99, 99 looked a lot better. But anyway, this was official US PlayStation Magazine demo disc number 2. I know I, I got more of the older ones that I skipped over and I'll get to them eventually, but uh, thanks for watching.